when you see the polar bear, it has almost become the symbol for the plight of wildlife in, in, in this era of global warming. So what is the status of the polar bear right now? Do we know how many are in existence in the wild? Yeah, there's, for many of the populations of polar bear, and there are 19 around the world in the Arctic nations, there's between 20 and 25,000 of those, and probably around 15,000 of those are actually in Canada. And we know that for the well-studied populations, like in Hudson Bay, and especially the Alaskan and Canadian Beaufort Sea, they've been well-studied for 30 years, WWF has supported them, and we know that uh, the numbers are going down, the numbers of cubs that they're having are going down, the weight's going down, and these are all... Uh, symptoms really compatible with melting sea ice. And, you know, a recent prophecy was that the polar bear could be extinct by, what, 2050? Certainly in the areas that are devoid of ice in the summer, Hudson Bay, uh, the Beaufort Sea, that is what even U.S. and Canadian government scientists now are admitting in their reports that uh, this is the projection. So you've borne witness uh, to this firsthand, gone to Churchill, just back in fact. So what were your observations as you obviously studied uh, the polar bear population there? Well, with the government, the Canadian Wildlife Service researchers, we were actually fitting satellite radio collars mm -hmm. onto some of the females, um, ones with one and two cubs, and then also measuring the condition of these bears. But the point of, of these satellite radios are to actually track remotely uh, from your computer, if you like, and we'll, this will be visible through the WWF website uh, in the next year, where these bears go. This is a remote sensing way of tracking them and how they're finding the ice or not finding the ice that they need to catch the seals. Is that the critical issue when it comes to survival and connecting the dots with the pol uh, polar bear population and global warming? The fact is that there's not enough ice. Explain then how that affects the polar bear's ability to hunt, to basically survive. Well, essentially they evolved a couple of hundred thousand years ago on the sea ice, and they have to catch ringed seals. They have to eat the fat from marine mammals, especially ringed seals, and they catch those just by surprising them mm. at, a, at a breathing hole, basically. Good hunters. If they have they the are, tools, they're great hunters. They are superb. The world's largest land carnivore, and it's evolved in this fantastically harsh environment to catch seals. But when they can't get out on the ice to catch the seals, they can't swim as fast as a seal, so they have to come ashore. And that's where the retracting and melting ice is essentially the destruction of the polar bear's habitat. So they store, and the fat that they've accumulated through in the spring has to see them right through till November when hopefully the sea ice comes back again. So what do you have to be done to reverse the trend if the, if the prophecy bears out and, and uh, we're looking at possible extinction in the not too distant future, uh, what are some of the steps that ought to be taken now to, to help save the polar bear? It's very simple, Nancy. Um, no more talk, no more aspirational uh, talks and assurances. Uh, we just need firm actions, concrete targets, as well as major voluntary actions from individuals, Canadians, Americans, Chinese, you name it. People who create carbon dioxide greenhouse gases and are contributing to this huge global problem have to act now. And it's really a sign of extremely weak, foolish leadership not to set firm targets now because this is the legacy we're all leaving to our children. Very interesting. Peter, good to talk to you. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.